Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ken's Show and Tell on this beautiful September 21st, 2024. Today we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of maintenance on this 1972 280SE 4.5. Specifically, we're going to be removing and servicing the air conditioning blower fan inside the cabin. Okay. Let me show you. I'm going to turn on the blower fan. I've I've redone this switch here. Basically, took it apart out of the panel here, cleaned it up really good. But what I want you to hear is what I'm going to address. I hope it does it. Yeah. Okay, it just went away. Let's see if it does it again. It did it when I turned it off. It's the fan motor. Listen to that wailing sound. Yeah. Okay. To me, that's screaming that the motor needs to be taken out and I need to oil the bearings if I can get to it and service it because I would like to save this motor um, rather than replace However, it. However, before we do, here's one of my resident helpers that I can find around the auto house here, especially after you've had a nice rain, which we did, which we badly needed uh, because of the drought. And so there it is, this lovely little toad. Uh, so we just let him alone and have a nice day. For safety reasons and so I don't burn up my bulbs inside the cabin, the courtesy lights, we'll go ahead and disconnect this battery. The blower motor lies behind this, this panel here and we need to remove this kick panel in order to make easy access for this. And you take out the screw here, 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 here. Also, there's another screw right back here. <coughs> and we'll take those out. We'll do, and the next thing we'll do is we'll remove <coughs> this screw, this one, and one right back here. it we'll take take that out I found that it's easy to remove the fan cover first and then I'll take then I'll take this out uh, to expose the entire fan so it'd be easier then you have your nice I replaced these speakers with these nice German made speakers right here and you see it's got positive and negative so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mark these where they where they were and, and i'm going to unplug them right here this is where i plugged them into the car uh, and so I'll, I'll mark this one over here with a little black mark corresponding on either side so i'll know which one is which next to the back of the motor was this orange wire which is power and is black which is um ground and so we need to disconnect the ground here Apparently, this bolt I just took out for this ground is also holding on one of the ears here to the mount of the fan. And there's another one around the corner here. Ah, there it is. Right there. Okay. We'll reach around there and take that out as best we can. See it? Hiding back there. Well, I think I used up some of my dexterity to get that uh, mounting screw out back there. But look, what it's done is loosen this up some. Damn. Oh, there. Okay, see it? Right behind that red wire. I'm going to pull that screw out, and that should release this uh, from that whole ductwork. And I can see over here where there's a screw missing. And I think while I'm at it, I'm going to replace that. Let's see what happens when I pull this out. Eureka! It's come out and I can get it on a workbench and I just have to figure out how to disconnect this wiring. I know I found the ground. Looks like it has to come through this hole here. Probably have to fish it through this hole right up here. This hole. And here's the power wire right here. I know it connects here and then it connects right in here too. Here's the plug. So I'll disconnect that 
and this I had to get rid of this take this relay out to give me access to this so let me just go ahead and hook all that and we'll go from there okay I und undid this tangled up main power wire here and I got a feeling this wire goes back to the switch of course this is the main power wire to this motor here and now that I have these things separated this goes up into the dash and this goes out through this hole along with this ground wire and I think I can just fish the whole thing through there let's just see well this is certainly one of those victory moments it's all out of there now I can put it on the workbench and see about lubricating that motor and cleaning up the fan the squirrel cage fan in there Boy, I tell you what I think I've used up years of dexterity on this job so far so let's take it well to the I think I'm starting with the simplest thing first so let me take this cover off and see about blowing out this squirrel cage and there's a collar on this shaft coming through there there's one screw already loosened All right, typical vintage Mercedes. It's been taken care of through its lifetime. Yeah, you get this collar loose. Looks like you undo this hex or Allen uh, little nut here or bolt, and then uh, it's a three millimeter. Let's undo it and see if we can't slide the squirrel cage out. I've got the three millimeter hex nut loose and see it's loose on the shaft. I can make it move up and down on the shaft. Maybe you can see where I had a little shadow. But you know this has been in the car since 1972 and so I'm gonna put a little I'm gonna blow this out with some compressed air and then put some penetrating fluid so it will maybe easier slide slide easier along this slat shaft here. well hey pretty boy here's an, here's my other helper that showed up you saw the toad earlier and here's my pretty boy buck yeah he was curious as to what I'm doing down here and there he goes he's so pretty young but pretty It's on there. I've had to spin it and spin it and spin it and take that Allen screw all the way out. Let's see. It is really stuck to the shaft. There. All right. There it is. Scroll cage fan. I'll, I'll get a, give it a good soaking and clean out the inside of that shaft there. 10 millimeter socket look at that oh that is just like butter when it comes apart it's lovely look at that okay here it comes one nut off And the last one, look at that. Nice German craftsmanship. Everything just fits. And the motor comes out. And here's the housing. We'll clean it up really good. Here's the motor out. I've blown it out with compressed air, the outside. And you got this these long screw type bolts to go all the way through here this one sticks out here see it goes from here to here and this one sticks out here so what I'm going to do is take these out and gently pull this thing apart and see what I need to do in there do that here's one see it's coming out
see now. Can I pull this out by hand? It's getting there. Yeah. There we go. That deserves to be cleaned up. Let's roll this gently over. And work on this screw. Here it comes. Okay. Here it comes. And feel it now. Clean up. I'll have to clean that up now. Let's just see what we have here. Okay, we'll pull this out. I can feel there's definitely a spring in there. It seems to go into a I feel resistance. There we go. To blow out all that dust and dirt in there. Here's where the brushes ride. Here was the resistance I was feeling. It was the springs, I thought so, on the brushes. I have to get that back in place. And then here's the end of the shaft that rides in a in a bearing bushing like piece back there and also in the, front. the squirrel cage fan with this brush and acetone and clean up the other pieces um, let me show you something that Mercedes engineers did that was so thoughtful that I just discovered I was wondering about that hole in the, one of these squirrel cage fans well can you see how it lines up down there okay let me let me show you what that is for watch this so you put your uh, allen screw right here on the end of your wrench stick it in this hole and then tighten it down on that shaft I think that is amazing that is just amazing to me anyway there you go another little piece of why you like your vintage Mercedes Benz okay here is my dilemma at this point <clears throat> I think these brushes brushes are okay they still have life left in them <clears throat> but what my real concern is is that on all electric motors I've messed around with before you had an exterior way in which to replace these um, brushes remove them replace them this is all internal um, and what you have to do is hold these brushes out of the way the end of the shaft sticks into this little cup back in there you can see it shining up through there and these brushes have to fit on the outside of this commutator uh, the problem is is holding the brushes out of the way while you slide all this thing slide all this back together and there is no external way in which to do it so um, my hunt my plan is to see if I can tie these brushes out of the way hold them in their spring-loaded cases here in their little holders and then when I put this back on the lid back on in the proper orientation I can reach in there and snip yeah I'm either going to use little wires to hold these things back or small zip ties I decided to use the wire I have this very thin wire because the zip tie was just too cumbersome you can see how the, the wire, I've got it. it, goes around this block here and holds this brush in place with the spring. And the way this thing is designed, it's impo almost impossible to put these brushes back in wrong because of this slot up here and the wire. It has to be oriented in this way and you see how it's oriented. The curvature and the brush itself it goes around the commutator, which is fine. So, um, so you can see this one is tied up. This one here is yet to be done. Here's the spring I have to put in there. And, uh, and we'll put the um, brush in there. Okay, <clears throat> here's my attempt to record how I'm doing this. Here's the spring. Put the spring back in here, like so. It's a strong little spring. 
And you've got the brush with the wire oriented upward so it goes into that slot. Okay. All right. So let's see. There it goes. So it slides in there. Now I have to hold it back. That's the tricky part. So I'll take uh, this wire here and fold it over and create sort of a loop. It's hard to do with one hand, but it can be done as I did the other one. Now mind you, this is just a temporary way to hold this brush out of the way. Make sure you get it. Okay, now let me. Uh, here we go. All right. Now I have to twist this. And mind you, it's temporary because the the idea is that I'm going to clip these things once I get the commutator over here and and the brushes are on either side of the commutator the idea the in theory anyways I can clip the wire reach in here and clip the wire and then um, pull it out so I can see the little bushing in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some oil inside there but before I do so I'm going to spray this and clean this up with some contact cleaner That will dry. Coming pretty good, huh? Okay. Lint free cloth. That moves. Interesting. That's kind of a concave, kind of a barrel-shaped arrangement in there, and that thing can move around inside there. Interesting. That's so you can remove it. Huh. I guess. Anyway. Be able to center that back in place. I'm really torn as to whether I should just drop oil down in there or uh, put some like wheel bearing grease, a little bit of real wheel bearing grease. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. All right, I've decided to use um, wheel bearing grease down inside this cup where the end of the uh, armature shaft sits in and in this right here is a pad that goes around that thing that kind of moves inside this cup here and um, I think it moves in sort of a wobbly direction so you can get perfectly a perfect axis lineup now, I've dropped a little oil in here thinking that that might be the places of absorption down below here to add additional lubrication uh, just like you would in dropping oil on your lubricating pad for your distributor shaft from the top okay don't want to put too much in there it's tempting to really glob it in there but now I've just pulled the end of this motor off the other end opposite the brush end um, and expose the shaft you can see there's a bushing in there oh well, look and there's a washer okay and there's another one of those pad like things which I'll put oil on 
but you can see the shaft and it's really rough right in here and so what I'm going to do is take some fine abrasive and polish that up a little bit smooth it up some and um, and then clean up the inside there with uh, some electrical cleaning electronic switch cleaning solution and uh, and then I'm going to clean up the end here of this commutator um, and then we'll uh, <laughs> I think we're not too far from trying to reassemble it yeah you can clearly see it's bushing here's the washer goes on the outside here very thin thin washer interesting okay oh wait a minute another one Okay, and that's a that's a bushing, not a ball bearing. Okay, into the shaft. Got it. Okay, this goes in the top of that, like that, and this sits on top. So you have these two. Well, oh, there's another one. Okay, and the I wonder if these are shims, but anyway. The washers now. Okay, needs to go back in there. Very interesting. Okay, let me clean up. Let me just wipe this down and put this back on. That's all cleaned up. Now what I'm going to do is put some um, wheel bearing grease inside there. And we'll let it sit here. We can go on both sides here. Put it in. Both sides of this little bushing here. And we won't forget to put the washers back on. Or shims, whatever they might be. Well, you saw a rough shaft. I think that's where we found the squealing coming from. Okay, so there's that. Now let's just drop some oil inside what looks like an oil an oiling pad. And we'll let it soak in there really good. Okay. stick these things back on there so we don't lose them yes all right set this aside look at the other piece I pulled on this a little bit and uh, it, it's giving me a lot of resistance and coming out of there and I don't know if it's just it's, it's, it's a magnets or there's a wire attached but uh, I'm not going to force it. This is as far apart as I'm going to take this. Now I'm going to clean up this commutator in the end of this shaft here and clean up the rough spot here on this shaft. I'll probably go ahead and clean up all this in here too. Just set it down like that. How nice that's looking. Just flushes it all out. 
turn it over, come at it from the other end. Now I can see down there a little better. Oh yeah, that black carbon stuff. Let's do it some more here. I know a lot of people have written about, oh, I just go down and replace it with a fan made for so-and-so and whatnot. And throw the old one out. I just don't want to do that. I like trying to rescue things and see if we can't get it working again properly. It, it was working before, just screaming at me. And to me, that scream said was saying, oil me, oil me. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> like it. Okay. Here's some emery cloth. And we'll just uh, try to polish this up some. To finish it off a little better, I put it on the wire wheel over there. Polish this tip up. That sticks in the end and that's nice and smooth. This is too. I, I, I didn't want to hit, well I hit the end here, right here. And then we'll, I'll touch this commutator here very gently with this emery cloth. And then we'll, uh, Hit it the cleaner again. Oh yeah, even that little bit feels feels better. Oh yeah, okay, let's do this end here. Okay, now we'll get another square of the cleaner. Clean that off. All right, put this this back piece on, which is where the squirrel cage fan connects, is right here. That slid on nicely. Now, the tricky part, 
Now, my idea is that these, um, this helps me guide this on, and then I can look in there and I can see if these things, if these brushes are clearing the commutator. And if they are, then the th in theory, I should be able to cut these wires or undo them and pull them through, and these brushes will snap in place over the commutator. I've got it lubricated, so let's just see what happens here. Put it up here. I'll do my best so you can see, but you're seeing at the same time I am. Let's just see, get this thing on there. Okay, now, how can I tell, oh, I see. Okay, everything snapped in place. It was a struggle, but the wire thing seemed to work. So what I'm going to do now is put these. Okay, I got that one lined up. Let's go ahead and get it down there. I can feel it coming out. There's going to be a nut holding it on the other end. So let's aim down that thing and get it all lined up. Yep, there it is. I can see right through there. So i off camera for a minute. Okay, I've got it all back together. Everything seems to be spinning okay. Moment of truth. Hook up to this battery here and let's just see what happens. Yeah! Oh, look at that. Success! All I gotta do now is get it back in the car. Tell you what, next thing to do is to assemble it back in the housing here on the bench and then just, just fire it up like that. Okay, and here it is connected to the 12 volt battery. I have to hold it, it's really quite torquey. Okay, I think it has a lot of life left in it. Now we just got to put it back in the car. Thank you for watching Ken's Show and Tell.